All right. Hello, everyone. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. Depending on when and where you're watching this Facebook Live, this is the face and the voice of Dr. Fluor Labrinton. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Living Spring Family Medical Center here in the beautiful city of Mansfield, Texas. Not too far from Dallas. I always mention that so you have a reference point. And here at Living Spring Family Medical Center, we do believe in helping our patients live long and well because we believe the quality of life is just as important as the quantity of life. Today, we'll be having conversations in line with our, um, our uh, eye health statement or our uh, motto. And that is titled, Doc, I want to be fit physically, help me. And we're going to be talking with a fitness coach who should be joining us um, soon. You should be joining us soon. If you are watching live, please hashtag live. And if you are watching replay, hashtag replay. There's still time to invite your friends to tag them. You can forward this video to them as well so they can watch it live with you. Um, I do believe that, you know, um, I do believe that, you know, there's a way to live life. You don't have to drag through life. There are little tips, big tips too that we can implement to help improve our quality of life. All right, our guest is here. Yay! All right, so I'm going to bring him on. Hi, how are you? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. And sorry about the, the little hiccup. I, I didn't I didn't know you didn't, you didn't get it, but I'm glad that you're here. So thank you, thank you, thank you. I was just introducing our topic and your timing is impeccable. So I'm going to hand over to you. Kindly introduce yourself. Absolutely. Who are you and what do you do? Sure. So my name is uh, JT Tapkus. I am a professional fitness life coach. I've been in the uh, fitness and nutrition space for 23 years, uh, initially owning and operating uh, brick and mortar um, hit training facilities. And uh, inside of that, at that time, we developed our, our own nutrition plan called the Empty Your Bucket Nutrition Plan. And about three years ago, we sold the franchise uh, in Florida. Uh, the gym franchise and we've been uh doing online nutrition coaching for the past three years uh, wow. full-time okay I, I i knew i knew you you would say too much about yourself uh, so your your coach your fitness coach your life coach your nutrition expert and you have a master's in substance abuse and eating disorders that's correct that's correct you you, you wow that, that's impressive that's impressive yeah. so why why do you do what you do what got you into this what because you're obviously passionate about health um but why if you don't mind yeah, me sure sure so it, it it really was something that that just uh unfolded as time went by I, i'm an ex-professional soccer player uh played in spain and mexico in the u.s my career ended at the age of uh, 24 uh, so very short career and I had to reinvent myself. And so when I came back to the States, I, uh, I opened a, a small uh, studio gym uh, because I wanted to go back to my first you know, love, which was fitness and nutrition. And I wanted to, you know, I didn't want to throw away my years of playing as a, as an ath uh, professional soccer as an athlete. And so I figured that that would be the, mo the most natural path was to, to just get into the training aspect of things. And so I started a small gym in, in a very gym saturated area. So specifically 30 gyms in a five mile radius. Wow. <laughs> so uh, lots of competition. So I, I early on, I knew two things. Uh, number one, I wanted to bring a great product to the marketplace. But number two, I wanted to differentiate myself from the competition. Mm -hmm. And so the way I went about that was making nutrition the number one component. I subscribe to the idea that 90% of people's results come through proper nutrition. In other words, that that silly saying, you can't outrun, you can't outwork out a bad diet. You basically, you have to do the work in the kitchen. And so uh, that's the thing we've been hyper-focused on for the past 23 years. Um, we view the world of nutrition through the lens of addiction. Heavy, heavy word that uh, we usually hear in terms of alcohol, drugs, cigarettes, right. things of that nature. Rarely do we hear people talk about food in terms of, of an addiction. But I believe that you know, food is probably one of the most addicting mechanisms out there. And so we approach it as such. Our program is very, very intentional, very systematic in, uh, in really bringing people into abstinence from high insulin yielding foods that we believe secrete dopamine. Anything that secretes dopamine, you know, basically makes us heavily dependent. And so, yeah, that's kind of the idea. I'm impressed, sir. I, I, I'm impressed with you. I love how you use you didn't allow maybe a, a detour in your career goals to 
to end it for you. You actually pivoted to something maybe dare say more powerful I mean soccer is important yeah. my, mom, my husband was a big fan um, and I am too but but I, I I'm impressed this is good this is good but I'm curious before we go ahead empty your bucket can you, can you, can you explain that a little bit sure sure so we have always not not from an, a rebellious perspective but we've always wanted to be different and what I might what I mean by different is that from the very uh, from the very get-go we we understood that the mechanics of nutrition uh, eat this don't eat that were important but beyond that we realized that the mental aspect of nutrition is 80 90 percent of the battle right and so mm -hmm. um if you ask me no one changes by guidelines or rules but instead by, by a different mindset a different perspective on things and so for us what we noticed early on was that people were coming to our gym and they had a lot of limiting beliefs and preconceived notions about what was possible and what wasn't possible. Uh, and so we needed to empty out those limiting beliefs and, and uh, preconceived notions and fill that bucket with things that can, that would, they would be able to sustain a healthy lifestyle throughout the, you know, their, the, the, the rest of their lives. And so the idea of emptying the bucket is emptying out those preconceived notions, those limiting beliefs, and pouring in things that are sustainable and, and are going to help people throughout their entire lives. So empty the crap, the stuff that doesn't serve you, <laughs> that, don't, that doesn't serve you and bring in the good stuff. Absolutely. Uh, I like it, I like it, very good. We're gonna have you on. We haven't finished the show yet, but we're gonna have you on again. All right, just give you that heads up real quick. Okay. All right, so let, let's, um, my first question to you is, let's talk um, weight loss. And and obviously you're, you're in the, you know, you have a gym, you understand, the, you know, exercise as a way to um, to lose weight. So for someone who's watching, who's like, oh, I want to get to the good stuff as far as exercise to help me either lose weight or maintain my weight loss. What are some effective exercises that you suggest? Yeah, so here here's the polarizing idea, right? And and this is one that is highly debated when I'm in, in, in forums and with other coaches and nutritionists. And I am of the thinking that, you know, and before I say this, I'd like to preface with the idea that I, fitness is a part of my life. I work out four or five, six times a week. I enjoy it. Um, I'm an advocate for it, but I understand that the number one thing that needs to change is the eating habits. And so we highly focus on that area. We actually tell our participants that for the first six to eight weeks, we don't want them to do resistance training but instead to dial their nutrition in and a specific type of movement called slow burn cardio or steady state cardio which is one of the best kept secrets for decreasing body fat percentages and losing unwanted weight in record time what's that called again and so slow, slow burn cardio or steady state cardio basically is a a very mild form of it could be walking, it could be swimming, as long as you stay within a particular heart rate and we give our participants that particular heart rate um, to stay in it for 45 to 60 minutes alongside our methodology is one of the most powerful ways to decrease body fat percentages and lose unwanted weight. One of the things that's important about this is that you know we have uh, people that have gone eight, 10 weeks without lifting weights but have lost 25, 30 pounds inside of our program, decreased between 3.5 and 7% body fat. And these people look as if they've been training <laughs> four or five, six times a week, because, you know, I always tell people, we, we all have, <laughs> we all have bodybuilders in us, right? We all are, we all have structurally, uh, you know, structural muscle and, and belly uh, uh, muscles that, that are there, but they're just covered with fat and body fat percentages. So when we naturally decrease these body fat percentages, what we see is the outline of the shoulders and the chest and the, and the waist and things really start to shape up. Obviously the transition is into, um, you know, into weights. So to answer your question, you know, I'm a big fan of um, uh, HIT training, which is basically circuit training, right? And, and the reason I like HIT is because it's dynamic. Uh, you know, you're, you're constantly moving. You're basically doing an exercise for 35 seconds. You're taking a break for 35 seconds. You're going on to the next exercise. So it's very dynamic. But on top of that, it's efficient because you get to work compound muscles. You're not just working your tricep or your bicep, but instead mm -hmm. you're doing, you know, you're doing a Spider-Man up, which is your chest and your shoulders and your core. Uh, and, and so it's very efficient. And so like I, I say to people, I don't know about you, but I, I don't have this uh, abundance of time. And so I have to be very efficient with my so, time. Yeah, hit training is, is hard. Yeah. 
Definitely, definitely. It's hard, but I, I understand the dynamism of it. And, you know, it, I mean, it's a big endorphin um, rush too. And, and I have some clients who do that and feel great. And I'm like, yeah, but I love the slow, board, the slow burn cardio you talk about. And you, you, you use words that I love, like walking. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> make it basic, like make it easy. So um, it's the whole point of this conversation is you can start, you know, um, you don't have to go straight ahead. You know, he's trying to maximize his time. That's good for him. But we can get things you could do that are easily accessible and don't require equipment. Just just you. Um, yeah. 100 percent and and that's that's probably one of the uh, concepts that i get the most resistance on because humans we have the idea that the harder we go the the better it should be for us right and i always say that you know nothing can be further from the truth actually some of the more simple things in life yield the biggest dividends such as as walking i mean walking as 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 silly as it sounds and as underrated as it is it's probably one of the best health hacks out there uh, walking 45 to 60 minutes at a brisk walk where you can hold a conversation and you're not out of breath. I mean, it's great for cognitive health. It's great for, uh, to decrease body fat percentages, to lose unwanted weight. It's good for, I mean, it, it just, it serves so many different areas. It edifies your immune system. Um, it's great for thinking. I mean, people tell me they have these amazing epiphanies, uh, on their 45, 60 minute walks. And so, you know, it's just an amazing, amazing way to embrace a movement without having to exert any kind of energy or having to have a gym membership or any of those things. I love it. I love it. So you heard, I didn't, I didn't ask him to say this, walking, one of the best ways you can, you can embrace movement, doesn't require anything but you, and that you can multitask while you do that too. So um, that's awesome. Now, next question is this though, JT, how often should I exercise to lose weight? Hmm. So once again, you know, <clears throat> there's many ways to lose weight. If we're going to talk about uh, uh, physical movement, resistance training as a form of weight loss, <clears throat> what we're really saying there, excuse me, <clears throat> is that um, we are, uh, there's, there's a caloric output that is happening that is creating a deficit that then leads to weight loss, right? Because we need to be in a deficit in order to lose weight. And so um, it, it's, a, it's a healthy balance. I would say, you know, uh, if, if, if you're just getting started, you know, uh, twice a week uh, is more than enough. 25, 30 minutes, really, if you know what you're doing, is, is more than enough. Um, you know, I see sometimes people in the gym for an hour and a half, two hours. I'm like, what are they doing, right? <laughs> so uh, maybe 25, 30 minutes if you're getting started. If you're more, uh, if, you, if you're, you're working out already, 45 minutes, max 60. Uh, two to three days a week is more than enough if you're working compound muscle groups. Um, and so muscle groups that work in conjunction, things such as chest, your shoulders, your triceps, your core, one day, the next day maybe, you know, or, or two days later, I like to leave a day in between to let your mm -hmm. nervous system, you know, really recover, which is also important. Recovery is an important part. Right. Um, legs and core. And then that third day you would do what we call pull, which is back, bicep and core. And there you have all the muscle groups. You have a day in between to rest. Uh, and recover, which is also underrated. Most people don't pay too much attention to recovery, but you know, I always say that uh, the pillar is sleep, nutrition, hydration, and movement, right? So those are kind of the pillars. Awesome, awesome. I, I like to do multiple rest days. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Can't do too much of them either. So balance, I, I, I love the options that you're giving. There's variety. I, for those who are watching, I'd encourage you to start where you are. We talked about walking, move while you're at work, just, just move. Uh, studies are actually showing that movements to kind of throughout the day is, able, is actually also efficient. You don't have to um, wait till you get that gym membership to start. For those of us who are watching, we're like, I don't know about the fit, but they get <laughs> training and all of that, but there are options. So this this is good. Now, my next question is this, and maybe I'll ask um, you, know, you, like, how do you stay motivated? Because you, you've, you said a lot of things that are relatively familiar. We know to exercise, we know to diet, but I think the biggest issue is staying committed and staying consistent. Mm -hmm. How do you stay motivated to stick to your, um, to your goals? That's yeah, that's a, mm -hmm. that's a powerful question because it is kind of the, uh, you know, inside of our groups, what we do is we do weekly webinars and I would say that 90% of our subjects have to do with the idea of, of desire, right? Like where does that desire emanate from? And I've been working out all my life and people say 
to me all the time, JT, it's easy for you because you love it. And mm -hmm. to be quite, be quite honest with you, no one likes to hurt, suffer <laughs> for any period of time, right? And so um, I have to convince myself every single day uh, to put my sneakers on and get to the gym or get to my walk. And so it's not something that's natural for us, but the reason it happens automatically is because it's become a way of life. In other words, there are other components of my life that are basically dependent on that movement. So I view it as a warm up for life. I work, I work out first thing in the morning, very early in the morning. Um, I won't tell you how early cause you'll judge me, but <laughs> Um, the idea there is that I am priming my day for success. So I know mm -hmm. that based on that movement, right, the rest of my day is going to hinge on that particular activity because I, I'm more cognizant of my food throughout the day. Uh, I have more energy. I have more mental acuity. I, I have more retention, more creativity. And the days that I don't physically, I'm not physically active, I'm not as mentally acute. I'm not as, as, as creative as I'd like to be. And so working out really brings the best out in me. And so therefore um, everything, my parenting, my, you know, my interactions with my spouse, with, you know, all these things hinge mm -hmm. on, on me activating my physiology, bringing in the right nutrients. And then of course, you know, um, uh, reframing ideas into positive ideas, which is also a big part of what we call being fit. It's not just physically, but you know, what's actually happening in your mind on a daily basis. How are you refra reframing the negativity of the day, the adversity? Mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. All these things play an important part. And so it's, it's something that just becomes an overall system and it's not just one aspect of my life it actually covers all areas of my life and for that reason that that's very important and that's a very strong why and i have two little ones i have a four-year-old and a seven-year-old and i believe that as part of, of of bringing them up and giving them good principles and good morals it's also my responsibility to to give them a, a, an example of of how to live healthy and so um, I make it a big point to exercise around my, my daughters to make better choices when it comes to food around my daughters. And, and so that's another big why for me is serving as an example for them. <clears throat> awesome. Awesome. So you've counted the cost and it's worth it. The inconvenience oh, is worth it. Um, absolutely. You put it, you put it before you every day. And so it's like, yeah, I don't like it. It's inconvenient. Well, in your case, you like it. Uh, it's inconvenient, but, but it's worth it. So um yes that's that's powerful the power of why it may sound pretty silly or simple but when you know what you get to gain it's worth getting up that early to do so for those of you who are watching i want to encourage you um if you're waiting to feel like it you might wait a long time so just count the cost and 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 see that it's worth it for you um so yes 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 thank you thank you jt this is good now next question Based on your experience in working with clients, what are some common mistakes people make when trying to lose weight and how can how can they avoid them? Yeah, yeah. So this is obviously a big topic for us because <clears throat> many of the people that are in our program have come from, uh, you know, different programs. And I don't want to say any names because I'm, I'm not throwing those systems under the bus. I think every system is out there to help and, and to and to bring uh, a solution. Uh, I just think a lot of these uh, sprint strategies are not efficient. And so I'm not a proponent of um, counting macros, calories, or points as popular as that is, because um, based on my my education, um, you know, as a counselor with a master's degree in substance abuse and eating disorders, I think oftentimes counting macros, calories, and points can be efficient efficient in the short term, but not in the long term. And I've seen it create more issues um, than anything else, right? Because people feel uh, restricted, they feel like they have to count every single, uh, you know, food they eat piece. And it just takes the, it takes the, the, the fun and the enjoyment out of food, right? Food is meant to be enjoyed. And so we just need to be well educated on what foods to eat so that we're not having to restrict ourselves or count points or calories or macros or any of these things. And so we've made, we've taken all the complexity out of our program when it comes to um, any of those points, uh, point systems, uh, and we've created our own methods to, to portion control and things of that nature. And so I would say that anything that we suppress comes out tenfold. And so if you feel like you're exerting a ton of energy for an extended period of time inside of whatever binding you know mechanism you're using to lose weight, it's not going to be sustainable. And you're going to get you're going to get frustrated and, and you don't want to go there. So you want to find something that really suits your lifestyle and your needs. 
Uh, you want to find accountability around that strategy. And then you want to be consistent because that's that's the name of the game, right? Consistency is the name of the game. Okay. Consistency is the name of the game. And we talked about the why earlier to help maintain or encourage that um, um, consistency. You also mentioned um, accountability. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, with everything in life, actually, I, I, different areas, business, you know, um, ministry, if that's something you're into, like, it's good to have accountability partners. It helps you. It makes it easier for you to make better choices. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, absolutely. Uh, and so, you know, <clears throat> I believe that um, accountability is everything, right? We, we, when we are accountable to a third party unbiased, uh, you know, accountability partner, right? Someone that we're either paying or someone that we don't know, but we respect. I think that creates a little bit of fr that that little bit of friction that we need to push us over the edge when we're ready to come up with excuses and reasons on why we don't want to do certain things. <clears throat> and then, you know, the inspiration that comes from these people that are holding us accountable, because hopefully the people that are keeping us accountable are living that particular yep. lifestyle that we're looking right. to live. Right. So it becomes very inspiring to see those people do it. And these people have developed hacks and tricks and ways to do it easier. And so um, it, it's just the path to follow is, is to find that mentor, someone that's already been down that path, that, down that journey and can hold you really accountable, can motivate you, and then can also remind you of the things that you committed to when you were excited, right? Because uh, first two weeks is what we call the romance stage. Everyone is, is happy and motivated and inspired and they want to do it. And all of a sudden, you know, um, life, life, is, life is life and gets busy and, and, and people tend to quit. And so having that person there is pivotal, pivotal to your success. Mm, I, I totally agree. This has been very, very good. Uh, I I trust that people are being encouraged to start, find someone who gently nudge or nag you to do what you need to do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and, and, it's, and it's worth it. It's worth it. Absolutely. Uh, so, JT, I, I have people who are watching who are like, man, this dude is awesome. He breaks it down in a way I can relate, and he's a coach, and he has a gym. Where can people find you? Sure, sure. So our, our website is emptyyourbucketplan.com. So that's our website. That's the easiest place to get all of the information. Uh, you can also go to coachjttapias.com and schedule a, a free discovery call there. Uh, we're all over social media on Instagram at emptyyourbucketplan. Um, uh, with Instagram, same thing with uh, TikTok. Um, and so pretty easy to find. We have a YouTube channel. Um, and uh, it's e eybplan.com. So E as an empty, Y your, uh, so eybplan.com is our, is our actual YouTube channel. And we have plenty of videos on there. Uh, and, and so, yeah, that's, those are the kind of the, the main social media outlets that we, uh, that we put lots of information on. Awesome. And I just posted some of them at the bottom of the screen so people can connect with you. Um, and it's also in the comments for those of you who are watching, um, so you can reach out here. But you, wait, wait, I, I heard free, free what uh, call you mentioned? Yep. I, I wanted to catch that so I could put it here. Yeah, so it's 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 just a free free discovery call where we basically go in. I see you know where you are, what you're looking to achieve, and uh, we walk you through a, a very in depth explanation with visuals of what we do specifically, why we're different. Um, how the system actually works. We break down all our phases inside of our 90 day transformation program, reset, reboot, and Excel, which are our three phases. Those three phases are really systematic because they are meant to really create sustainability. And that's, that's our, our value proposition is that it's not even weight loss, it's sustainability. And so, you know, we are humbly proud to say that um, eight out of 10 people that come through our program are incredibly successful. Nine out of 10 sustain the things that we teach inside of our programs. And so really that's, that's what we strive to do is to really teach sustainability, teach a lifestyle around this. And so in that discovery call, we break it all down. It's just a free uh, assessment of where you are uh, based on your weight, height, age. And uh, yeah, you get all that information. It's a, it's a 30 minute uh, conversation where we break everything down and, and uh, we basically put all your, your, we're, we map out all your goals. And uh, if we're, if we're a good fit, awesome. If not, then you walk away with a ton of great information. Awesome. Awesome. So how do we, how do we get that? Can you mention that one more yeah. time? Again? 
yeah so that's you can go to emptyyourbucketplan.com and click on the link there it'll give you the the ability to to, to schedule a discovery call okay and uh and so that's that's the direct link also uh coach jt tapias dot com also takes you straight to that uh to that link so yeah awesome awesome thank you so much for coming here i love the sustainability aspect you emphasize because that's the whole goal it's a lifestyle i've seen people go through boot camp different things lose weight and then come right back so sustainability you want to learn a new lifestyle a way of doing things so this is something you do down the line and your quality of life is better for it this has been great. I'm going to put you on the spot and say we're going to do this in six months, right? Sure. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. Awesome. I appreciate you taking the time to come talk with us this morning. My Thank pleasure. You so much. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. All right. Awesome. Thank you all for watching. I see some of you liked and loved this comment. Please, as always, share. Karen is sharing. So forward this to someone who could find this useful. And as always, if you or anyone you know is looking for an awesome, a thorough, and a passionate family physician, who we have conversations like this to help you live long and well. I am she. Have a good one.